Hello, I'm Angie Mako, and I am an energy healer specializing with women going through grief and divorce. And today I want to talk about, are you in a power struggle with your partner? Um, so I'm going to ask you 11 questions and I, I want you to put your hands over your heart if you're willing and just really close your eyes. And when you answer these, just come up with the first most immediate response. And don't overthink it and assess yourself on a scale of 0 to 10, 10 being the highest. And then I have a, a scoring system to where if you fall in, you get 0 to 36 points. That tells me that you're probably in a very healthy, secure relationship. If you have 37 to 73 points, you probably feel like a roller coaster um, in your relationship. And if you have 74 to 110, you probably are in a power struggle with your partner. Okay, number one is, are you in a power struggle with your partner? And a power struggle is simply where you are competing for control or influence with another person. Um, if you feel like you take on more responsibility than they do, um, and this can leave you feeling like you're being taken advantage of, then that might have you keeping score. This indicates a power struggle. Number two, do you feel the need to defend yourself a lot? You know, just like if we were walking around with an open wound on our arm and every time we scraped it, it hurt, right? If we didn't tend to it. Well, emotionally, we're similar to that unattended wound when we have a belief system that leaves us feeling vulnerable, raw, and then on some level, abandoned and isolated. And so when this is the case and we're insecure like that, we do have a tendency to defend ourselves a lot. It's a symptom of protecting ourselves from a perceived bully. Number three, does being wrong or not right uh, with your partner threaten you? You know, like if we came from a highly competitive family or we came from a family that was very critical of us um, and judgmental of us, we might really be triggered by this. Number four, do you resent your partner? Um, the reason we might resent our partner is that we believe whoever controls us is leveraging us. And so it's there's a tendency, and it's usually subconscious, that we feel that um, we don't trust our own self. And so for example, if our partner's the main breadwinner and we have to ask them for money, or we rely on our partner to make most major decisions on our behalf because we don't want to either be bothered with it or we just feel like we're not capable. You know, those kinds of things. So do you resent your partner? Number five. Do you blame your partner for how you feel? And this is so easy to do. It's We all have a part within us that wants to say, it's your fault. You did this, so therefore I feel this way. Um, but it's not very empowering at all. Number six, uh, does it make you angry when your partner blames you for how they feel? Of course, um, when our partner blames us for how they feel, this is called projection. Um, it's the same thing that uh, we do to them when we blame them for our feelings. Um, and the first, like when they blame us, they're making all sorts of assumptions about how we feel. And like I had a boyfriend once who cheated a lot on girlfriends. And so because this was his lived experience of how the world works, he assumed that I was a cheater as well. Um, but it just doesn't work that way. Um, projections lead to a lot of drama and, and unhappiness. It's best to realize that we only truly know our own thoughts. Number seven, do you engage in petty arguments with your partner? Uh, if you do, you know, this is the part that's probably responsible for that is your inner rebel teen. Um, this guy named Terry Real, he is a family therapist. He came up with this term adaptive child which is the part of us that actually developed in response to being abused to protect the wounded inner child, um, to help us to survive. So the adaptive child is not interested in intimacy uh, or vulnerability or any kind of, um, uh, forget it. Okay, number seven is, do you engage in petty arguments with your partner? If you do, then the part responsible for that is most likely your inner rebel teen. And this guy named Terry Real, who is a family therapist, came up with this term adaptive child, 
which developed in response to needing protect, to protect our wounded child who was being abused as we grew up or mistreated in some way. Our teen thought that they were being abused. This adaptive child is not interested in intimacy or connection or anything but self-preservation. Number eight, do you complain to your partner a lot? Um, we complain at times because we feel powerless and frustrated to change our circumstances. Um, we haven't found a solution. And when we complain to them, they're often wanting to find that solution, but we're really not interested in it. We're just wanting to vent and give us an emotional release, which is the payoff. Uh, number nine, do you feel jealous and insecure with your partner? Like, are you super competitive with them, comparing yourself to them, and, um, you know, thinking maybe it's unfair that they have advantages that you don't have? Um, we all have an insecure part. Think back when we were teens. Uh, number 10, is it scary to reveal vulnerable thoughts and feelings to your partner? Um, we, have, we all have a sensitive side, and because we were hurt, we have a tendency to not trust. And so when the trust goes, so does the connection and the intimacy. Um, and number 11, do you expect your partner to behave a certain way to keep you comfortable? This is not unusual at all either. Um, we have this unspoken understanding that our partner should take on certain roles and make us happy and comfortable. But what if our partner is not supposed to make us comfortable, but actually to help push us out of our comfort zone? See the notes for more details about all of these questions so you can assess yourself. So in order to really heal or stop that power struggle, with our partner, we need to heal the energy, the hurt, the resentment in our hearts from childhood wounds. Um, the solution, we have to love that adaptive child, teach them that they came here for a good reason, which was to help us to survive, and finally limit them with healthy boundaries because they're wreaking havoc on our happiness and in our relationships. How to do this? Um, we can use techniques like emotional freedom technique. First, we have to go into the body and feel what's going on there. We need to feel safe to be in our body. Second, we need to feel supported by someone who has our back. And third, after we feel safe and supported, we can begin to process and clear the trauma. When we keep showing up for ourselves and not abandoning ourselves with shameful thoughts, true healing can begin. I'm here to support you. Go to HarmonyHarbor.com and my contact page and let's schedule a free time to talk.